In this video, I'll be covering some more questions on photons. The first question concerns this graph, which shows us the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons versus the frequency of the incident radiation, or the frequency of the photons incident on a cesium metal surface. Okay, so the first question, part A, requires us to use the graph to determine some things. In A, part one, we need to determine Planck's constant. Right, so this is a question about gradient because Planck's constant is given by the gradient of a graph like this. Before we start writing anything down from readings off the graph, whatever, can I just highlight a couple of things? Something that I sometimes fail to do myself is check the quantities and any conversion factors on the axes. You can see on the y-axis, for kinetic energy, that those values are in EV, so we will need to do conversions there. And the frequency is in 10 to the 15 hertz, so we'll also need to do conversions there. So please be aware of those. Okay, so the like I said, the first thing we need to do is work out the gradient. Let's just change this to a bit more of a, more of a visible color for this. So we're going to obviously take this point here for our first reading. That's at the 0 0.5 times 10 to the 15 hertz frequency point. And we can choose this point here is a good point for reading off on this grid. So, yep, we use that. So, uh, the gradient, this is A part one, I'm going to write down here, uh, gradient. When you're doing graph work if you're working out the gradient it's a good idea to write down that's what you're working out again make things clear for an examiner if you if you're doing this in an exam situation so what points have we got here so we want y2 y2 is up here so that would be uh, that's going up in point ones for each small square so that would be 3.4 minus zero because our y1 value is zero here i'm going to include the conversion factor for ev so that's going to be 3.4 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and x2 would be so if i just draw a line i'll go back to my pink color here draw a line down from there Okay, so that's 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.35, because this is going up in 0 0.05s per small grid square. So that's 1.35 minus, and you can see there I'm starting at 0 0.5, or 0 0.50 rather, and also include 10 to the 15 there for the 10 to the 15 hertz. So when we substitute the values into a calculator and work that out, we're going to get 6.40 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds for Planck's constant. Okay, so this is equal to h, isn't it? h equals that. Okay, there we go. That's the first part of the question done. Part two. We now need to determine the work function for cesium. Work function is the minimum energy for uh, photoelectric emission. And um, it corresponds with the threshold frequency, so the frequency at which you start to get emissions. And that is at the x intercept, or frequency intercept, if you like. But anyway, yeah, it's where it intercepts on the frequency axis. Okay, so phi equals hf0. So what we're going to do is going to use the Planck's constant value that we just calculated by using the gradient and multiply that by the threshold frequency, which is 0 0.50 times 10 to the 15. 
Okay, once again, don't forget that conversion factor. So when we put the those values in, that will be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So it's an amount of energy. Okay, so that's part two. Part three, what's the maximum velocity of photoelectrons when the frequency of the incoming radiation is 1.0 times 10 to the 15 hertz? So I'm going to mark that out with a different colour. I'll use this fairly bright green here. So I'm going to mark that out on the graph using this. So 1.0 times 10 to the 15 hertz is here. So I go up to the line at that point and then go across to see what is the energy and you can see it's 2.0 and that's EV okay so part three the kinetic energy will equal 2.0 EV and kinetic energy of course is a half mv squared so this is 2.0 times uh, 1.6 sorry 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules uh, if we just multiply 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 by 2 then that will be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 joules so i'll just do that conversion there since that's very straightforward and now we'll finish off solving our rearranging here. So V squared equals 2EK over M. Probably by now you've rearranged this equation many times. Just is do that one step like that. So it's just a square of that. So put our values in now. 2 times 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19. Divide that by the mass. Well you need to know the mass of electrons here. Look that up in your formula book and you'll see it's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, so multiply those out, divide, square root, and we're gonna get 8.382 times 10 to the five meters per second. So they come off there very fast. We should write that to the appropriate number of SF. So that'll be two again. So 8.4 times 10 to the 5 meters per second, I make that. Yeah, just leave that one on the line there. Okay. So that's part A done. We're now told that manganese has a work function of 4.08 EV. Draw a second line to show the variation with frequency of the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons emitted from a manganese surface. If you remember, the gradient of our line is Planck's constant. Planck's constant is, as the name suggests, constant. So the gradient of our line for manganese is going to have the same gradient as for cesium. But we do need to know where it intercepts on the frequency axis. So we need to take this work function and work out the threshold frequency that corresponds with that. And then we can work that out. So B, work function is HF0. So therefore, the threshold frequency for manganese is going to be work function over H, which will be, again, we use the same Planck's constant that we worked out before. So they said it was 4.08 EV. Turn that into joules with multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Divide that by 6.4 times 10 to the minus 34. Okay, so when we do that, that will give us 1.02 times 10 to the sorry times 10 to the 15 hertz so that's just past the 1.0 on our graph so i will use orange here so we can see what we're doing 
If you've got a ruler, it's a good idea. Line your ruler up with the line you've already got and then just shift it along until the X intercept is the right value. In my case, since I'm doing it on a tablet, I'm just going to grab that line with the same gradient and shift it along till it's just past the 1.0. That's probably just a, just a tad off. Usually, graph work, as long as you're accurate within half a, a small square, you should be fine. So yeah, that's, that's what our graph would look like for manganese. So there you go. You, you need to keep the gradient the same and have the right or the correct x-intercept.